Hello everyone and welcome to another Autodesk Maya tutorial in our Art Asset Pipeline series. This time, we're taking a close look at the concept of LODs, along with the way they're supposed to be set up in Autodesk Maya, and the way they function internally inside CryEngine. But before we get into the LOD setup itself, let's first have a short look at what LODs actually are, for those of you who are new in the game development area. The term LOD, short for level of detail, involves decreasing the complexity of a 3D model based on the distance it has from the player's perspective. Factors such as the importance of the asset, the size it has, the speed it's moving at, all influence the level of simplification that can occur on the object without making the transition noticeable. And that's the main factor that an artist would have to focus most on, avoiding any kind of popping. Popping is a term used in the industry to express the change in an asset's quality when the player is moving around the world. Similar to draw distance, a switch in LODs can cause the asset to distract the player, due to our eyes being really good at perceiving movement and distortions. Therefore, there are a few sets of unwritten rules when creating LODs for your assets, such as the percentage of the overall vertex count that you can reduce from one LOD to another, the number of LODs needed for the best performance ratio, and the lowest you can go when it comes to the complexity of the highest LOD geometry. Wait. Highest? I, I, thought, I thought you said the lowest you can go. Exactly. LODs are usually counted backwards, starting with LOD0, which is usually referred to as the highest quality version of the asset, and in CryEngine's case, ending with LOD5, which refers to the lowest quality version of the asset. If we're talking about the hierarchy in which you need to set up your LODs, whether you prefer using 3ds Max, Maya, Blender, or any other 3D modeling software, the LOD0 version of your asset is always going to have the name of your asset, the way you want to see it in the asset browser. All the other LODs have to be defined and numbered accordingly. This tutorial was made as a continuation to the previous tutorial in the series, so if you are new to CryEngine or Maya, I recommend watching the proxy tutorial first, in order to properly understand some of the concepts we'll discuss. As you can see, I have a simple boat here, which already has a proxy and three different LOD elements. I've configured the proxy and the materials just like in the previous episode, so these two elements are already ready to be exported. Down here, I have three LOD elements which aren't ready for the export yet. This is what we're going to be working with now. In order to keep this video short and easy to understand, I'm not gonna go over the modeling process today, but you can find plenty of tutorials out there which will explain how you can create LODs for your models yourself. First, I'm going to make sure that every LOD element follows the right naming scheme. The name of the asset, boat in this case, and then an underscore LOD and its number. Now, if I click through these geometry elements, you can see that the higher the LOD number I have selected, the lower the polygon count for that asset is gonna be. We usually try to keep each LOD at around 50% of the polygon count of the previous LOD. If the percentage of polygons between LODs is higher than 67% specifically, we will trigger a warning as soon as you export the object with the Crytools pipeline in order to let you know that there is still room for performance optimizations in your model. I am now going to show you how we approach exporting this asset, along with the proxy and the LODs, using the Crytools pipeline. Now once again, just to be clear, I've already configured the main mesh, the proxy, the material, and the export settings according to the previous tutorial in the series. These LODs use the exact same materials that I've used for the main LOD0 version of the boat, so the original mesh, so we don't need to configure anything in regards to the material setup. If you followed the information in the previous tutorial, you should be good to go. All I need to do in order to integrate these LODs into the export is to group them inside of the main cry export node, all within their own groups, which will define which LOD is which. This is a slight bit different compared to 3ds Max. What we're doing now is equivalent to using the dollar sign technique, which is used within the geometry element's name in order to assign a certain attribute to it. But since we cannot use symbols within the names of the geometries in Maya, we need to use groups in order to mark or define our LODs properly. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select the LOD1 element, and I'll press Ctrl G to group it. Now I'll rename the group to underscore LOD1, and then underscore again, followed by the name of the geometry, in this case, boat, and then underscore group. This is what we're going to have to do for every LOD in the list. Once that's done, the only thing we need to do is to grab the groups themselves and parent them to the main export group, right beneath the cry export node like this. Now when I collapse the group, I should no longer see any elements. And that's it. The rest of the export is identical to the export process showcased in the last video. Now as soon as you set up your material groups and the export settings according to the previous tutorial, you are ready to save your Maya project file in the location you want, and to hit export. Let's have a look at the FBX pipeline now, and like I've previously mentioned, when we use the FBX format to export an asset from 3ds Max or Blender, we usually mark certain elements using the dollar sign at the beginning of the geometry's name, 
followed by the type of mesh it is supposed to be, for example, dollar sign proxy or dollar sign LOD. Yeah, uh, the problem is this won't work here, because we cannot use that symbol in the name of the asset in Maya by default. However, the FBX importer allows you to determine exactly what each geometry element is supposed to act as directly in the importer. The only thing we need to fix is the hierarchy of these elements, because we no longer need to use groups to determine what these geometries act as. So I'm quickly going to ungroup everything and pretend that all these elements are separated. I can easily keep the names and the material setup intact, because I already have the right materials assigned to the geometries accordingly. Now, just like in the previous video, I'm going to make sure to parent the proxy as well as all three LODs to the main mesh, and I can export the whole setup here as an FBX file, which I'll just drag and drop into the FBX importer. As soon as I drag the file into the importer, I'll assign the right LOD number to the right geometry in the source window, and I'll generate the material according to our Maya setup. Oh, and make sure to physicalize your proxy, I always end up forgetting that one. So here I have the two individual assets I exported just earlier, using both pipelines. From now on, this information applies to both of them. The only difference between them would be the importing method and the setup. Now it's time to check if the LODs actually work properly, so the best way to debug this would be to select the object and to look over to its properties. Here, you can see this LOD ratio slider. If I drag this all the way up, I will decrease the distance I need to have from the object in order to shuffle through all of the LODs quickly. And if I move away from it, you can see that the quality of the geometry is decreasing the further I go. So if I go into the console and type E underscore debug draw 3, you can see that I will be able to see which LODs we're seeing at the current moment in time. If I move closer or further away from the object, you can see that the number is changing. Adjusting the LOD ratio will also change the distance ratio between the different LODs. And now, you know how to set up LODs in Maya. <laughs> That's the end of it. And if you have any questions or you need any help, make sure to check out our official Discord channel where you can get in contact with us and other members of our community. And I'll see you in the next one. Nah, I'm actually serious. Like, you should definitely check out our Discord. We have, like, memes and stuff.